Video game covers have been a thing for almost as long as video games themselves. Just like movie posters, album covers, book covers, and uh, YouTube thumbnails, I guess. <laughs> Video game covers are meant to be eye-catching in order to sell to potential customers. So companies attempt a wide variety of things that range from extremely boring like every AAA game that's been released in like the last 10 years, to a surprisingly well-done minimalist design like the original Metal Gear Solid, to uh, whatever the hell this is. I don't even think there's a baby in this game. For sports games, in order to make their games more marketable, they implement the use of an athlete on the cover of the game or athletes, or athletes. This has become a staple for sports games. It's kind of hard to imagine a yearly release game without it. Could you imagine a minimalist design for an NBA 2K game? Like, what is this? The John Cena edition? I can't see anything. Come on, no one's gonna buy this. Are you sure about that? Cover athletes haven't always been a thing though. Back in the olden days, we had games with awe-inspiring titles like Golf. Yep, that sure is golf. And such a title gives us a cover that shows us just that. And the fact that this is a game program. No real cover athlete though. No offense to whoever the hell this is. Or this. Or this. And this would be the standard until one game changed all of that. <laughs> Nope, not Tech Mobile. Nope, not Mike Tyson's punch out. I broke my back, spinal. I can give you the rest of your life and you probably never guess. It's Dr. J and Larry Bird go one on one. A game where Dr. J and Larry Bird go one on one. Well, you can't say the title's clickbait. Well, to be honest with you guys, this will probably be the most influential game I ever talk about on this channel. And it's not just because you could shatter the backboard with a layup. This is the first sports game to use the likeness of real players, hence the cover. And since this game was published by EA, they would go on to make Madden, which leads us to where we are today. Or better or worse, after Dr. J and Larry Bird was released, we would eventually get more and more real cover athletes. No, I mean, seriously, everyone had their own game back then. Bill Walsh, Tommy Lasorda, Bill Lambeard's Combat Basketball, like, what the hell is this? This is something that always confused me. Back in the year 19-whatever, did people really look at an old dude in a suit on a game cover and be like, yep, I'm buying this. I understand these guys are great coaches, but you would think the cover would be a player doing something cool in the actual sport. Not a guy in a suit who you'd think is the accountant if you were none the wiser. None of these cover coaches would ever last, except John Madden himself, who was going to be featured on the cover of Madden 23. Speaking of Madden, it's hard not to mention the Madden cover curse. I'm not gonna go into detail about this because there are about 7,952 videos on YouTube that have already covered this topic already. But to give you the too long didn't read version of it, whether it's decline in performance, injuries, off the field issues, or some crazy amalgamation of the three, the curse was so feared by fans that there was a cover vote to see which player would be on the cover of Madden 12 and everyone voted for Peyton Hillis of the Browns, so a player from their favorite team wouldn't suffer the curse's wrath. Look, it's up to you if you want to believe in this sort of thing. And you know, with the late John Madden being on the cover of Madden 23, will the curse affect him? I mean, how could it? He's already, you know, dead. There's not much more a curse can do. Nowadays, the Madden curse has spun off onto other series. MLB The Show cover curse, UFC cover curse, NHL cover curse, WWE cover curse. This thing is its own subgenre at this point. For years, sports game covers were mostly just action shots of the player. These are pretty boring and uneventful, so companies decided to go with some branding. EA Sports had this white void, 2K is red, Microsoft games had this little yellow hologram thingy. 
Sony games had this little red circle going on. The armpit of sports gaming, known as Acclaim, had this design going on for their extreme sports games where it looks like somebody hired someone from Fiverr to make a cover in about seven and a half minutes. Probably one of the most abstract and odd cover athlete designs is EA Sports design for their games in 2020. On one hand, it's different. On the other hand, it looks like someone just poorly cut out random pictures of an athlete and pasted them together haphazardly in Microsoft Paint and just slapped the title of the game on there. In the case of UFC 4, there are hardly any action shots of cover athletes Jorge Masvidal and Israel Adesanya. It's hardly recognizable as an MMA game. Overall, this cover design is different, but a little weird. I don't know, am I crazy? What do you guys think about this? Cover athletes can also differ depending Depending on the region. This is most notable in the FIFA series since soccer is such a worldwide sport you have so many different covers for so many different regions. FIFA 16 has 17 covers with 19 different cover athletes. You think that's enough? You can feel the whole damn team with that number. NBA 2K19's Australian cover athlete is Ben Simmons with a boxing kangaroo in the background to fully let you know that this is Australia. It's kind of silly. Should the US cover have McDonald's arches in the background? SmackDown vs. Raw 2011's US cover is Big Show, John Cena, and The Miz. The European cover art is Undertaker, Randy Orton, and Sheamus. I don't know what's so European about it. I mean, yeah, Sheamus is in there, but he's pushed off to the side while Randy Orton, the American, is in front. Maybe it's because he always does European uppercuts. I don't know. Mexican cover art has Rey Mysterio in the front, and the Canadian cover art has Bret Hart in the front. And that actually makes sense. If only the parts unknown region got a cover, maybe Papa Shango could have made it on there. SmackDown vs. Raw 2011 also had a joke cover of The Miz, The Miz, and of course, The Miz. I have to mention the Japanese NBA Live 2004 cover, which features legendary Japanese basketball player Wizards Michael Jordan. I get that Jordan is the most famous basketball player ever because he starred in Space Jam and that hit video game Michael Jordan Chaos in the Windy City on SNES. But really? I don't I don't know about this. Regional covers are not the only example of multiple cover athletes. For the NCAA football series, each console had their own cover athlete for some reason. PS2, PS3, PSP, Xbox 360. For NCAA 09 on the Wii, the cover was decided via voting. But instead of voting for athletes, you voted for mascots. Hey, if you learned anything from this video, just remember that democracy led us to getting Michigan State mascot Sparty onto the cover of the Wii version of NCAA 2009. God bless America. Special editions of games also gives us alternative cover athletes and designs. A lot of the times these use past athletes that don't play anymore to capitalize on nostalgia. I mean to honor the athlete, of course, because I can't think of a better way to honor the late Kobe Bryant than giving us an addition to the game that's more expensive and gives us nothing but digital bullshit. People eat these covers up though. My favorite would have to be the Shohei Otani manga styled illustration. I think it looks pretty cool and should probably be the actual cover of the game to be honest with you. Some cover athletes have some pretty unique circumstances to it. Take a look at MLB 19 The Show. They decided to go with Bryce Harper for their cover athlete, which isn't inherently bad. But the thing is, is that he was a free agent going into the offseason. Free agents never really get onto the cover because they're not on a team, which would lead to uncertainty. Sony decided to go with Harper so they can capitalize on the buzz of him being a free agent. And it worked. It worked a little too well. You had gullible 11 year olds tweeting at the developer to demand where Harper is signing, as if a video game company would announce that. As a placeholder cover, we would get Harper in a hoodie and it looks like an Assassin's Creed knockoff game that you find on Steam. Now normally free agents sign around December or January. Harper ended up signing with the Phillies on February 28th, which was less than a month before the game would be released. What we ended up getting is this blatant Photoshop cover of him in a Phillies uniform. 
We actually had a similar issue with Madden 09's cover. The cover of that game would go to Brett Favre, who was retiring for the 4,690th time. But he would come out of retirement and would immediately be traded to the Jets. Uh-oh, now the game's cover, along with the UI, is completely outdated. EA would just offer the same cover, except Favre would be photoshopped in a Jets uniform. But the thing is, you had to print it out, which is the most 2000s thing ever. Like seriously, did anyone browse Operation Sports Forms printing out alternate covers? No? Well anyway, the official cover you would buy on store shelves just ended up being far in the package uniform. I'll talk about some of the odder ones now. Wrestling games have always had pretty regular schmegular covers. Just a hodgepodge of top wrestlers on a cover. There are some weirder ones, like Stacy Keebler being front and center on Day of Reckoning 2 for some reason, and Rob Van Dam being on the front of a Game Boy game. But nothing compares to sweaty Vince with heterochromia. I actually don't mind this, just for variety's sake. And you understand that the red eye represents Raw and the blue eye represents SmackDown. But I don't know why he's sweating like a bottle of Coke in the sun, though. When the Madden 22 cover was teased, we had a chance for probably the most unique and strangest cover for gaming in general. When a teaser for the cover showed two goats just, uh, existing. No, this isn't Goat Simulator, this is Madden. The cover actually ended up being Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes, which is a bit of a disappointment. Come on, tell me you wouldn't play this. There's a reason I used it for the thumbnail. I also hated what we ended up with anyway, because calling Patrick Mahomes the GOAT this early on into his career is so premature. And the term GOAT is thrown around so much you think it's my mother. So we've had coaches, players, a damn chairman, a mascot, and the potential of two literal GOATs. How about a referee? Pro Evolution Soccer 3 had this guy on the front of the cover for some reason. This isn't even interesting in an abstract sort of way, like those MS Paint EA covers from earlier. It's just a referee. Imagine buying a wrestling game and it's just Earl Hebner on the front. You know what I mean? This dude's on the cover of Pro Evolution Soccer 4 as well. He's not the only one, but he's still on there. The guy isn't even in the games he's on the cover of. It's even stranger when you figure out that he's in FIFA 2005 which is the competitor to the Pro Evolution Soccer series. This guy must have had some deep, dark intel on Konami, because I can't think of another explanation. To put a nice bow on things, who has the most cover athlete appearances, not counting regional covers or special editions? There have been some athletes like Shaq and Tom Brady that have been on multiple covers, but we could do a little bit better. Names you probably didn't think of right away are Allen Iverson and Ken Griffey Jr. Iverson was the face of the early NBA 2K games and racked up some covers and he ended up with five of them. Griffey had his own series as well and an appearance on MLB The Show 17. He ended up with five as well. Impressive. But the name that a lot of people would immediately think of is Michael Jordan. Jordan had six covers. The late Kobe Bryant had six as well with covers across three completely different series. What's even more impressive is Derek Jeter being the face of two completely different series. He was on six covers of All-Star Baseball and three covers of MLB 2K. Nobody's beating that, right? I always wanted to say this. For shizzle. <laughs> Tiger Woods, how can you forget, right? He was the face of the PGA Tour games and he would end up with a massive 15 to 16 cover appearances. Depends on how you count PGA Tour 12. Tiger is on there, but he's just kind of like in the background. You can hardly make out who he even is. But even with that, no one's coming close. So that's that. Oh yeah, Tony Hawk, right? He's not pretending he's a Superman. He is one when it comes to this. A total of 17 cover appearances. But there is some controversy. Tony Hawk Ride doesn't have anyone on the cover. Sorry, but the name of the video is Cover Athletes, not Title Athletes. And I don't see Hawk, either the skateboarder nor the animal, anywhere. Same for Tony Hawk Underground and Tony Hawk Shred. They're just silhouettes. And I guess you could say that it's Tony Hawk, but you just don't know. Especially in the case of Underground, because character creation is so prevalent in that game. This could be you, me, or your creepy uncle, for all I know. 
Excluding those three games puts Tony Hawk at 14, which is one to two games below Tiger Woods. I would think Tony Hawk would eventually pass this because I don't think Tiger Woods would ever be on the front of a video game cover again. Well, I can see Tony Hawk games continuing on at some point. Uh, hey, this is me after editing. Apparently PGA Tour 2K23 has Tiger Woods on the cover, thus nullifying like the last minute of the video or at least that last statement I just made. So, uh, yeah. Before I declare Tiger Woods the winner, the wacky world of pro wrestling has something to say about this. Triple H. That stands for Hollywood Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Hogan has a huge advantage because he was on top of the wrestling world right as the video game boom period was about to hit in the 80s. He has been on 21 covers from WWE to WCW to TNA to games without ties to a promotion to his very own Kinect game. Uh, don't play this. But as I mentioned earlier, wrestling covers are filled with multiple wrestlers. Like there's somewhere Hogan makes an appearance, but he's obscured in the background or he's like in a square for some reason. Like. Do these count? <laughs> it's really rare to find a cover where he's not surrounded by at least one other person. How the hell did Raven get on the cover? Anyway, I leave it up to you, but I'd give it to Tiger Woods. For shizzle. But hey, who am I? A nobody. I get like 400 views a video. I'm nothing special. Before this video abruptly ends, I just want to show you the worst cover I found while making this video. Slam City with Scotty Pippen. You know, maybe the 90s weren't that great after all. 